in, from the, 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 the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, the pharmaceuticals or the medicine moved to be single molecule, single target. And the reason, because first of all, it's very simple. Second, you can have an IP on that. You can protect it on the commercial side. And it's, it's a balance between the two of them, you know, the, the business side that push for that, because what I can protect, I can make a lot of money and from that. And, and from the other side, it's simple. You can understand why it's working, what exactly those to give, what is the, and it's, for thousands of years, the medicine lay on, 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 uh, uh, on nature, you know. Welcome to the Totanic Connection Show. My name is Kevan Davani. My very special guest is Professor Dr. David Myrie, or also called Daddy Myrie. Um, thanks so much for your time and uh, coming on my show. How are you doing? Uh, thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. And I'm doing fine in this uh, strange, weird uh, world situation, but uh, still Indeed. doing fine. Indeed. Let me just give you, uh, give my listeners, our listeners, a little bit of background. Uh, David Myrie, a PhD, is an associate professor at the Faculty of Biology at the Technion uh, um, Institute. That the, that's the Israel Institute of Technology and a member of the Technion Integrated Cancer Center. Um, Dr. Myri holds a MSc in biochemistry and a PhD in plant biotechnology from Tel Aviv University. And he conducted a post uh, doctoral fellowship at the Ontario Cancer Institute where he focused on tumor invasion and metastasis. Um, upon completion of his postdoctoral fellowship, Dr. Myrie took a position at the Techno in Israel Institute of Technology, where he heads the Laboratory of Cancer Biology and Cannabinoid Research. And at the moment, maybe you can add a little bit of uh, details. His, um, Professor Myrie's lab investigates the therapeutic potential of pitocannabinoids with focus on the anti-tumor effects of cannabinoids. Um, and then on, on top of that, he's operating the cannabis database project and his lab is currently involved in uh, a lot of cl clinical trials covering diverse aspects of cannabis treatment, such as colon disease, pain prevention, cancer treatment, and epilepsy. Um, now, Professor, uh, first I want to, you know, tell you a little bit uh, why we're doing this. Uh, our show, Botanic Connection, is about, all, of course, all about education. But uh, it's because of the, um, to be frank, it's we have a very strange schizophrenic uh, legal situation in Austria, <laughs> where um, yeah, this is why I envy, you know, the the the, the scientific uh, and very rational ethical uh, position that the Israeli researchers such as yourself or Professor Mechulam have been taking for so many decades now, and uh, it just for me not not comprehensible why you know patients people who are really sick, who need help, who need, um, you know, uh, who need treatment are being denied, you know, the very essence uh, of, of a natural plant, uh, the holistic properties of a natural plant cannabis. They're being still, stick we have the year 2020 in these crazy times and we um, patients are still being stigmatized, uh, criminalized. And, um, and the experts who are being the task of giving experts opinion, they're either, I don't know, buys or somehow a very close relationship with pharmaceutical companies. So, you know, I just wanna, you know, have your position, your thoughts. Why, why do we have this, this, this uh, before we go into the scientific and research topics, why do you think we have this situation right now? No, it's a complicated. Uh, it's a complicated issue. It's not black and white. Uh, physician and I'm teaching in the medical school. You know, they have a very important role, and and the role is to find the best treatment to their patients. And I believe you know that most of the the physician and again I'm teaching and I know them uh, are are people that coming with a lot of uh, ideology to help the patient. They are good people, very good people. You know, and and they want to find the best treatment for their patients. So I think that the nibel or, or the, the block is not coming from evil things or from, uh, you know, pharma behind it. They learn in a, in, a, in a certain way how to treat a patient for years. 
and they will learn it in a very, very, very accurate way. They, they need to calculate a lot of parameters. Okay, you are a male, 45 years old, you are bald, uh, you suffer from uh, high sugar in the blood, you have a heart uh, problems, and you also have a, a kind of inflammation. What will be the best treatment that I can tell you? And they're doing this calculation on data that they learn, learn how to calculate. And now you're coming and you're telling them, look, you learned seven years in, in university, then you did another three years internship and another five years uh, to be an expert. Forget from everything. I don't know why it's working, but it's working, give it. So this is a problem, you know, you, you're taking the, 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 the roads of their, or, or they safe, the safe place of what they know to do and, and you say, trust me, it's working. You don't need to know whatever you learn. And this is a, not an easy a, a decision for a physician to throw the basic or, or, or the, the solid concrete that he's sending on of his knowledge. And, and, and this is the major obstacle. We don't know in most of the cases why cannabis is working. And more than that, we don't know which cannabis is working. It's, it's kind of a, you know, a, a trail and error. Try this, is not working. Try this, is not working, right? And, and this is not a way physicians know to, do, to work. It's, it's, it's a problem. So to break this wall, it's not easy. Um, in, from the, 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 the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, the pharmaceuticals or the medicine moved to be single molecule, single target. And the reason, because first of all, it's very simple. Second, you can have an IP on that. You can protect it on the commercial side. And it's, it's a balance between the two of them, you know, the, the business side that push for that, because what I can protect, I can make a lot of money and from that. And, and from the other side, it's simple. You can understand why it's working, what exactly those to give, what is the... And it's for thousands of years, the medicine lay on, 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 uh, uh, on nature, you know, whether it's uh, using uh, plants or uh, algae from the sea or, uh, you know, uh, scorpions from, uh, you know, it, it's based on, on, on the nature. But when you move to be single molecule, single target, it's, it's moved to be more uh, uh, synthetic and more commercial. And for many years, uh, around 80 years, the pharma and the medicine walk this way. But there was few walls or few ceilings that they couldn't break. And in the last 10, 15 years, and cannabis is a, one example, but I think the major one and the one that opened the door and the window, uh, there is the polypharmacology. When you're saying, if I can't break this wall, I will try to attack it from different angles. So there are a few diseases and cancer, it's one of them, that for, for years we don't succeed really to solve the problem. Cancer, it's a given name to hundreds of different diseases, and there is types of cancer that there is a cure for them or there is a medicine, but in most of the cases, we're still throwing atomic bombs. We call them, a, you know, a radiation or a chemotherapy, but this is let's kill everything and then hope the, the patient will survive. We don't know how to treat. We're just killing everything. And uh, so cancer is one example, but I think the most uh, known example was the HIV. And the, or the AIDS. In the HIV, this uh, virus, this complicated virus, you know, the, the COVID-19 is a simple virus. In a year, a half a year, there will be a, a solution for that because if you understand the biology, it's a simple virus. When you're talking in the HIV, this is a, a complicated virus sitting in the immune system, very, very problematic. So for you to try to find a solution, but they find there was a, 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 a one medicine that helped in 20% and one medicine that helped in 30% and one medicine that did a little bit, a little bit. None of them really solved the problem. 
until there was one guy that came and said, you know what, let's make from all of them a cocktail and try to attack the disease, the, the virus from different angles, maybe this won't survive. And, and this today, the treatment for the HIV patients, it's a cocktail of, of different compounds. On that idea, there is other uh, um, diseases that we are trying to attack it, what we call polypharmacology, that we are trying to attack that from different angles. So different molecules, they attack the same uh, protein or different compounds, they attack different pathways, but create a, a complicated action on, on the cell, on the virus, whatever. Plant is polypharmacology in-house, you know, and cannabis is an amazing an example for that, that have more than 140 phytocannabinoids that are interacting with the endocannabinoids and there are terpenoids and flavonoids and all together you're getting very complicated action in one box and the, the, the problem is to understand and to solve this complex complexity but today we understand at least I, I think that I understand in my lab that it's few compounds that binding different receptors creating a complicated action on the cells. And this is what we call the entourage effect or the, you know, the, the whole plant action, which you don't get it if you're taking just one molecule. So if to coming back to your question, the problem that we don't understand this complexity yet, and this creates fear. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, there is a fundamental problem, which I've been told also by other doctors who are, you know, uh, sort of s s more or less specialized in cannabinoid treatment. They say that, you know, for so many decades, for such a long time, doc or, uh, medical students, uh, you know, the uh, people in the medical profession had never been taught anything about the endocannabinoid system. So I think it's it ha also has educational roots or, or the lack of education or the lack of, you know, knowledge and comprehension. Uh, but now, you know, we have the year 2020 and now they've also, uh, um, I don't know, let's say whoever that, whatever institutions or, or, or pharmaceuticals, they have uh, submitted an application to the European Commission to even um, <laughs> put CBD on the level of THC. Uh, I mean, to, pro you know, to prohibit CBD. I mean, it's, 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 it's really, in my, in my, from my perspective, totally insane. And I don't think it will be successful, but, but just the mere fact that they're trying even to, uh, you know, make it, make even, uh, you know, sort of restrict the usage or, or make CBD illegal um, is, uh, you know, uh, is a, yeah, is a, is a warning sign, I think, for, for our times. Are there any diseases, uh, doctor, that w where would you, where you would say that you know it's we have such a you know uh, a huge um, uh, what do you say lack of knowledge where or or lack of effectivity? I mean, would you say there are some diseases where there's also you know m more than enough uh, research results or, or or studies done where you know where you can't say anymore there you know there's a controversy, but then other uh, it, you know, diseases uh, where, where, you know, a lot of research still has to be done. So I, I would start with the beginning of what you said, at least in Israel, most of the medical school is teaching today uh, courses of, uh, about the endocannabinoid system. In Israel, it's more uh, conceptable or, or we, we, because Rafi Meshulam uh, is doing this research from the 60s, and he was always very important scientist in Israel. He was the, uh, the dean of the medical uh, school. He was the, uh, the head of the university, Jerusalem University. He wasn't a, you know, it's not that we discover him when he was 90. He was always important scientist in Israel. And, and, and so the concept of the endocannabinoid system or the research in cannabis is, was in Israel from, from ever, okay? And not from ever, but at least from the 60s. And I think uh, it was more easier for us, the scientists, to take it into the, you know, to the middle of, of the scene or uh, to make it more central. So today in Israel, all the medical school have uh, at least one course of uh, endocannabinoid system. I am teaching in courses to, for physicians, nurses, pharmacists, 
So uh, there is at least eight courses in Israel a year that I'm teaching in them, which teach physicians that are already, you know, expert in that, but taking a course that it's out of the hospital, but a course for physicians for the cannabis and the endocannabinoid system. So at least in the education in Israel, there is a big improvement. And again, this is open, uh, the physician to be open to also to treat when they understand that there is a logic behind it. It's not stoners. There is endocannabinoid system. There is a receptor. It's responsible for sleep. It's responsible for feeling appetite. It's responsible for feeling pain. So it makes sense that the cannabis will help that. It make, when you make the sense behind that, it's much easier for them to accept it. And, you know, at least once a week, I think I'm, I'm lecturing in hospitals in Israel, at least once a week. In, 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 uh, in department and then, and, and, and you see the big change in the last three years. If uh, three years ago, people told me uh, on my dead body that in my, uh, uh, you know, department we will treat with cannabis. Today, nobody is, there is no department that not treating with cannabis in Israel, or at least have the uh, patient that uh, have prescription for cannabis. Um, the question, if I understand right, your question was, if there is diseases that we know for sure and there is enough science to be sure that cannabis is helping and, and there is diseases that still, there is a lot of research to do. So the answer is yes. I think in, um, in epilepsy, there is no doubt, you know, it's, it's, it's cut clear and there is enough uh, uh, clinical trials that have been done but also it's very easy. You have a child that tried five different medicines, nothing helped him. He have 40 seizures a day. Now we're taking cannabis without THC and he's seizure free. You can't argue with that. It's, you know, it's in your face. You can't argue with that. And there is 37% success in kids that are resistant to medicines and cannabis help them. So I think epilepsy is very, very strong indication. Also, you know, GW already passed the FDA on treatment epilepsy with their product. So it's also even been, have the stamp from the FDA that cannabis is uh, reducing seizures in epilepsy. And um, I think uh, uh, reducing pain, nausea, uh, increasing appetite and all these side effects of cancer treatment, at least in Israel, it's very acceptable. And there is few clinical trials that show that uh, um, this is a good treatment. Pain, um, inflammation, all the autoimmune disease, we understand the mechanism and, and for that reason it's very acceptable. I think there is many neurodegenerative uh, diseases that we still didn't touch and the cannabis is very effective. From dementia and Alzheimer's, in my lab we have amazing results with Alzheimer's. We literally uh, eliminating uh, Alzheimer in mice. Unfortunately, mice are very different. Their brain is very different from our brain. So uh, it's still not in, in humans, but at least in mice, I, I can eliminate the uh, Alzheimer with uh, phytocannabinoids and I already understand the mechanism, also why it's doing that. But also other neurodegenerative uh, diseases, I think cannabis will be very, very effective. Um, I think uh, all the uh, uh, diseases that are related to our immune system, like multiple sclerosis, ALS, uh, um, uh, many autoimmune diseases that we didn't touch, I think cannabis for sure is affecting strongly on the immune system. And for that reason, there is a lot to do on that, uh, on that space. But you know, in general, and I'm saying that in, in, in my last lectures, uh, usually, if you ask me where I see the cannabis in five years, I see two different roads. I see products that are treating specific illnesses, very accurate uh, product for very accurate indication. These compounds or this combination or this strain in this way of growing, but very accurate to reduce seizures in epilepsy. This and these molecules treating leukemia, you know, very accurate uh, products or very accurate molecules in very accurate combination to treat specific illnesses. And I see a product that are 
treating quality of life. So I think one of the major effects of cannabis is that it's affecting quality of life as a general. Okay, and, and, and what I mean by that, I, I need to explain. The endocannabinoid system, it's a, it's a homostatic system that's sitting in every cell in our body. I'm not familiar with any cell in our body that don't uh, uh, express uh, endocannabinoid receptors and producing endocannabinoids. So it's actually controlling and doing homostasis in, uh, or balancing most of the uh, uh, system is in our body. And it's kind of a, a very moderate effect. So in every system in our body, we have a, a very severe or, or strong effect. And we have the endocannabinoid system to do the fine tuning. It's not true for everything. It's not true for all the systems, but in general, I will say that way, okay? If we're not eating for two days, our intestine is shrinking, send, sending hormones to our brain to eat. And this is very strong effect. When you're not eating for two days, you are hungry, you are angry, you have a bad a breath, uh, you know, uh, 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 everything is very strong because your body is under stress and you need to eat. But this is specific hormone. The endocannabinoid system is very minor. It's for the appetite. It's for, you know, it's for eating dessert. It's when you're moving near a dish and smelling the, rare, the, the smell of the dish, it's increased your appetite. This is a delicate. And, and if we're talking about pain, we have the strong and severe a, a, a system, which is the opioid system. You know, if you are uh, under a accident, car crash, and you wounded severely, the body will produce opioid and you will, you will be totally stoned. Your body needs to, to survive life. You want to reduce the heart beating, that you want to move, everything is taking you off, that you won't feel the strong pain. But this is a very severe action. But now if you're just touching something hot in your hand jump, this is very specific action, very specific location. This will do the endocannabinoid system. So we need to understand that the endocannabinoid system is very localized in, in places, usually the action, and it should be moderate. That's what it knows to do. And the cannabis affects many systems because now you don't take one compound in specific location. You're taking many compounds that are going to all of your body and it will affect very a lot of systems, but very moderate. So it's a little bit to affect your sleep, a little bit. A little bit to increase your appetite, a little bit make you relax, a little bit uh, improve your mood. Everything small, small gaps, but all together you're getting something very holistic and strong. And, and I think there will be arm of product that people will take it just to improve their quality of life, to sleep a little bit better, to have a little bit less pain, to have a little bit better mood. And they, there are groups that it's fit to them. PTSD is a patient, post-trauma disorder, you know. They have a problem to sleep. They are, have anxiety. Uh, they have nightmares. And all of this, the cannabis is improving a little bit, but all together, you get something better. Think about older people. Okay, my mother, she's 82 years old. And in two hours, I need to take her to a physician, literally. Okay, so... She's, she has a problem to sleep. She's not sleeping as good as she was sleeping. She's suffering from pain or from her knee and from her back. Um, she don't have the appetite that she had before, you know? She don't have a good mood. She's 82 years old. She's very smart. She knows that she won't live to 200, you know? And altogether, her quality of life is going down and down and down every year as it passed. And why not to take a product that it's, you know, a, a natural product that a little bit will help her to sleep, a little bit will help her mood, a little bit will uh, help her appetite, a little bit will reduce the pain. Instead of take a whole meal of pill, one pill for sleep, one pill for appetite, one pill for that, she can take one thing that help a little bit in everything, but all together, she's much, much, much better. So I see, think there will be product for that. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, this is, you know, this is again, uh, this fundamental difference in, in the situ situation in Israel uh, or in, uh, in, in Austria or maybe even Germany, but in Germany, they're even more advanced since 2017. Uh, this is what I'm saying. You have a much, you know, you have an unbelievably holistic approach and you're talking about like the natural essence and natural, you know, healing properties, the holistic plant of cannabis. Uh, people over here in Austria, we don't even have access to the medical cannabis plant, to the, you know, to the flower, to the to the essence of it. So uh, under certain conditions, you can get a prescription from a, uh, you know, specialized doctor in ca uh, cannabinoids uh, like Dronabinol, but that's a, uh, you know, synthetic derivation. Um, so this is the sad part of it. Uh, so this is, I'm saying uh, the legal situation doesn't even allow uh, patients. I mean, you know, I mean, th the question I always ask, you know, how much suffering, how much suffering does a patient have to endure in order to be allowed uh, which they still can't, you know, uh, to be allowed to access a medical cannabis. I mean, uh, the natural plant, uh, and and uh, all you can get is under certain conditions, uh, get access to a you know synthetically derived, um, um, uh, you know, uh, cannabis extract, which is not holistic in its in its properties. Um, so yeah. the other question I was always also because you said you know people want to uh, some people want to just increase the quality of life so do you see like a blurring line between like healing and curing and preventively uh, preventing like preventively uh, preventively like uh, consuming or, or you know cannabis uh, which you don't have to smoke of course but you can you know uh, eat it or, or uh, you know or, or have drops or oil or whatever essence and and somehow prevent diseases in that way so you know in general in medicine we're not curing diseases in general like if there is a bacteria or virus we know how to kill it okay so if you have an infection from bacteria you're taking antibiotics you kill it you're curing okay if it's virus you can kill it you can cure it really diseases we usually not curing we are treating the disease or, or improving the quality of life or preventing the, uh, the next burst, okay? Uh, it's true for, uh, you know, uh, all, the, all the diseases that you can think about. I, I, you know, you have heart disease, you're not curing the heart disease, you're just treating that. You're taking pills and keeping the, the heart, the, you know, to beep right or whatever. If you have a uh, IBD, uh, you know, intestinal uh, bone inflammation, you're taking uh, steroids or pill that keeping it low. We usually not curing disease, unfortunately. Uh, we curing when we know to replace, uh, you know, the engine. You you have a uh, you know heart uh, implantation instead of your heart. Maybe you can fix it, but we mechanic. We don't, you know, when we can cut or uh, take out or. Uh, connect back, uh, that's fine, but we usually not curing. So cannabis is, is on the same level. I don't see cannabis curing diseases. It will help the patient to maintain the disease and to live better. That's it's usually what medicines are doing. And, and cannabis is not different. I think the advantage of cannabis, the major advantage of cannabis as a medicine, it's the low risk. So you know, patients are coming to me and said, well, this is our rights to get uh, the medicines that we are choosing. This is not right. You're not getting the hospital laying, uh, you know, in the emergency room and say to the physician, I want this and this and this from the shelf. You never do that. You don't have a right as a patient to decide which medicine. It's not right. I don't, I don't familiar any country that the patient have the right to choose his medicine, okay? And, and, and this is a basic right, if you have the right to commit suicide or not commit suicide, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a philosophic a question about a society, okay? And how much you keep the society and how much that, and it's the same thing. I don't think that everybody thinks that there is a right to take, a, a, you know, opioids, even though it's a natural plant, you can, you know, go, grow puppies and take opioids, right? Why not? Why it's not our option or legal to do that or uh, you know a uh, psychoactive mushrooms it's open to bigger questions i do think that because the difference between the puppies and opiates and and the uh, you know psychoactive mushrooms or other things 
that in cannabis, there is a low risk. What is the risk? What you are risking? That you will be stoned for three hours and then you will be right? Like, there is no, no overdose, okay? And the risk, there is risk. There is people that have psycho, uh, uh, you know, uh, sch getting schizophrenia, or there is uh, something called hypermesis that people are st starting to throw out without the ability to stop. And there is risk, but this risk is very, very, very low. These are minor uh, effects. And let's say unreversible uh, problems are so rare, so the risk is very low. And then the, there is the question, why not to try? It's not working for every patient, okay? If, if people think that if you have pain, you will take cannabis, that's it, you don't have a pain, it's not working that way, okay? Uh, just 50% of the patient are uh, uh, having a pain reduction 50% not, and, and not all the strains of cannabis affecting and that. But this is true for every medicine. And the question is, why not to try? If you're suffering, why not to try to improve your quality of life? If it's not working, okay, move on. If it's working, you're not risking much. And you don't need to take strains that have high THC to be stoned. There is strength of high CBD, there is strength of high CBG. I have a strain in my lab that is very effective to many things that have zero THC, zero CBD. Okay, it's a high CBG strain. That's strained with high CBC. So there are many types of plants. You don't need to be stoned every time that you mm -hmm. take cannabis. You can take cannabis on the acid form, like before the carboxylation, which you don't feel the effect, but let's say in Alzheimer's, we know that it's very effective or in prostate cancer. So it's wider then uh, you know just taking being stoned and and and, and right, so right. and the question is why not to try but well, is is thc um in a in a in a specific uh, balance or 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 uh, uh, a combination is would would you say in 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 some instances or you know in in some conditions uh, uh, is 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 actually necessary for you know it to be effective with other yeah, whatever pitocannabinoid, it's, CBD, and you know, it's, it's the psychoactive uh, compounds, but it's also the most potent active phytocannabinoid at least that we see. So in many diseases or action, you need the THC. You can't run from that. So uh, you know, uh, um, if you look on uh, on pain reduction, it's just trained with high THC. Uh, it, it might be not just the THC, it might be not the THC, but it's THC strains, okay? And, and uh, um, there are other uh, diseases or uh, things that you need the THC. So, you know, uh, my lab was working on different types of cancers and then we have a result from breast cancer, a specific type of breast cancer that it's two compounds, but one of them is THC. So there, there will be... A, places that you won't be able to run from that. The THC is very active. It's not by accident that we are being stoned. It's because it's very active. And what is affecting our body is affecting, you know, it's the, there is two sides of the coin. Right. Um, you know, I've been talking to, as you know, Dr. Kurt Blas, who is, uh, you know, uh, really such a strong advocate and, and specialist in cannabinoid. And he's actually, you know, sort of told me to, to, to talk to you and, and I also talked to the chairman of a consumer protection agency who is a pay, pain patient himself. And he's been taking, uh, he has a sort of an autoimmune uh, disorder and taking for many, many years uh, CBD. But I asked him, as, as I asked him, you know, if if cannabis was you know legalized, would you then switch? And he said definitely. He would definitely switch from the whatever synthetic or you know just CBD to the natural plant. And this is what I'm saying. You know, we don't even have <laughs> the legal access to the natural plant to, uh, to uh, with you know with the uh, uh, with the expertise and the uh, you know and the treatment of of the doctor. I mean. You know, as you say, it's it's uh, the patient can't just you know do you know consume something, which he doesn't even really know the knowledge. Uh, you know, he doesn't have the knowledge about. But um, so, what 
do you i mean how, how can how can we in austria you know learn maybe from you you know or, or other researchers scientists such as yourself like what is it that what, what kind of message would you give uh, to the pain patients or the doctors who are uh, to the, all the advocates who are trying you know to to have a more rational ethical and and you know human friendly uh, uh, you know medical uh, condition so you know first of all i will separate legalization and and medical treatment okay there is a lot of uh, medicines that are not legal you need to go to pharmacy with a with a prescription otherwise you can buy them and and i don't understand how cannabis can be different from that so if a physician thinks that it's a good medicine and want to prescribe it why it's different from opioids and other drugs that are uh, you know not legal but but medicine i think and 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 for that i can argue with everyone and and explain in the very good way that cannabis should be a, another medicine in the toolbox of the physician to treat his patient. Sometimes it's not the best treatment. Sometimes it will be the best treatment or, or the, the, the second or the third in the line after the, the first treatment won't uh, help. And, and the role of the physician and his obligation is swearing on that, okay? That he will always give the best treatment to his patient. And if cannabis is the best treatment, it's his obligation to, to learn about that and to be able to give that. As a, as a country, as a physician, this, and as a society, our obligation is, or we, we must try to help our patient as much as we can. And, and we need to be honest, you know, not always cannabis is the best treatment. I'm not sure that the in, in epilepsy, it should be the first line. But of course, if you didn't succeed the first, the second, the third, then you have nothing to do. These kids that have 40 seizures a day will, will become uh, uh, retarded and usually won't survive puberty. They are dying. So how can you prevent something that can save their life? It's crazy, okay? Legalization is something else. Would you be able to just buy it in a grocery without a prescription, this is an argument about how it's affected the, you know, uh, the society and other things. But as a prescription, why is different from other drugs, okay? What I see and, and what I'm doing in the last three to four years, I found myself without a decision, okay, it's just happening, being a gap between the holistic side the science and the physicians, okay? I can speak in three languages. When you're taking, you know, a herbalist or, or somebody that believes in, in plants and you put him in front of physician, they don't speak the same language. They, they don't, they can't communicate usually. I'm finding myself as a person that have a, a, a master's in biochemistry a PhD in molecular and genetic plant biology. I was the head of the botanic gardens uh, of Tel Aviv University and the medicinal garden uh, for seven years. I know every plant, what is doing and everything. And then four years work in a hospital doing cancer research. And today my lab is combining them. I can speak the all, all languages. I can speak with the grower and I understand ex exactly how to grow and the genetic and everything. I can speak the holistic side, I can speak the physician, and I'm finding myself closing the, these gaps. I didn't, uh, it's never happened to me that I'm coming to a meeting in hospital with the physicians, that I, I'm not ending the meeting, that they ask me, okay, daddy, how can we start to work together? What do you need from us? How can you, let's do a clinical trial together. Let's try to start to, to treat the patient and to do follow-up together. Never happened to me and I had, I don't want to exaggerate, but more than 100 meetings like that, okay? Never happened to me that I'm not finishing which have them with me. It, it just, and it's just because I know to, to speak with the language. You know, every meeting like that, there is around 10 physicians, you know, head of the department, very important people. It's always starting with the same joke, you know, did you brought samples? everybody's laughing, right? Oh, you know, that is working with cannabis. Did you brought the samples? Everybody's laughing. And then I'm starting to, to show the results. 
And around after 10 minutes, somebody is stopping me. Some one of the physicians said, oh, come on, daddy, do you really believe cannabis can uh, kill cancer cells? Or do you really believe cannabis can help for that? And I'm, I'm looking at and said, I gambled my career on that. Do you think that I don't believe? Okay, yes, I believe. And, and give me another 20 minutes and you will believe too. And I'm going slowly, slowly, and she explaining about the endocannabinoid system and the receptors. And there is, we are looking at 28 receptors and we can uh, under, uh, see 150 endocannabinoids and the endocannabinoids doing that and that and that. And this is the phytocannabinoid. This is the molecule. You see it's binding here. You see the side is binding here. And it's uh, starting this uh, pathway and this pathway doing that and that. I'm explaining to them in their language why the cannabis is so effective. And when I'm ending that, they're with me always, always, always. I never had the situation that I finished the meeting and the physician said, hey, daddy, look, uh, this is crap. We, we don't believe in that. This is just for stoners. Never, never. So I think we need to know how to approach the medical care, the physician, the, the, the minister of health, whatever, in order to change it. It's the way you know to speak with somebody you can you can fight with somebody you can knock your head in the wall or you can find a way to reach these people and there is a way because there is logic there is science behind it it's really happening it's just a way to explain and and i think uh, our big uh, success in israel and it's 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 not me it's uh, you know it's People that come way before me, it's Rafi Mishulem and Lumi Rahanush and uh, Geloni. There was five, six very good scientists that did a very good work and opened the door. I'm coming with very high technology, with the hype behind me, with, uh, you know, almost 80 science, scientists that working under me that create so much knowledge and interaction that every meeting I can tell something new. So, so this is bringing a wave. But, uh, and, and I think in Israel, we change totally the way physicians uh, think, the way the ministers uh, in, in the government thinks. It's totally pro-cannabis today. Yeah. Uh, you know, Doctor, let me, before we just wrap up, really, thanks so much for, for taking the time. To, um, but, you know, we are observing because my girlfriend has a grow shop and this is one of the reasons we're doing this show because there are people like 70, 80 or, you know, even older years old, um, usually as a couple, they go into these grow shops, they buy these plants um, uh, b that have, you know, less than 0 0.3 THC. That's what legal sort of, you know, the, the small plants. Otherwise, you know, it's illegal. That's why, you know, it's we have a really, uh, really uh, uh, difficult situation also with the doctors because they cannot really dis even prescribe, even if it's they see it as a necessity. Let's say, you know, you have somebody who has seizures. Uh, the doctor can't even prescribe if he deems it really necessary for, you know, or treating uh, the, the patient with uh, with a natural uh, medical cannabis pl uh, plant. So uh, yeah, so I'm hoping you know that um, um, p uh, you know the pain patients, the doctors, the the, the media, the, the the lawmakers, they learn something you know from 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 the process that is taking place actually for so many decades now in Israel. So any other you know final thoughts or where people can or uh, can find more about your research? Oh, you know, uh, in, in the way uh, communication works today, if you Google and you write uh, my name, unfortunately, you will find uh, a lot of uh, talks. Uh, I had a TED talk that I did uh, three years ago and then other things. Um, it's always surprising me, but there is so many things online. Also, there is the site of the lab. We're doing a research in cancer, but also in epilepsy, Alzheimer's, sleep disorders, and multiple sclerosis. In all of them, there is a very uh, important uh, results. I'm very proud of my students and the work they are doing. Um, and I'm happy, you know, I'm always available uh, if, uh, if somebody, uh, you know, uh, want to collaborate or want to ask something, uh, I, I must say something that this is uh, also important. I'm not a physician and I 
don't know yet to help patient. Most of my patients have four legs and a tail, you know, so uh, we, I, I'm, I'm participating today in, in 11 clinical trials. And, and, and when I'm saying participating, usually I'm helping the physician to run the clinical trials. I'm checking the cannabis, I'm checking the endocannabinoid system in the blood, I'm doing the follow-up, but usually it's the physician uh, clinical trials. A lot of patients are approaching me, mainly cancer patients, you know, uh, uh, I have a breast cancer uh, stage four, this and that, which cannabis do you think I should take? Unfortunately, I don't know these answers. So, and I don't think somebody in the world know the answer. Cancer, it's a given name to hundreds of different diseases. In my lab only, I have 900 different types of cannabis and I have just 900 because there is a limit how much I need. And uh, you know, there are thousands and, and to find the right cannabis to the right cancer, it's still a lottery. We have advanced research in few types of, uh, of cancers, but I still not in a place that really can help a, a patient. So usually after these kind of interviews, I'm getting 100 emails about, you know, <laughs> my neighbor had a, you know, a prostate cancer and I really want to help him. I'm trying to answer people very politely, but it's, I'm, I'm unfortunately, literally, I would, I would be more than happy to help. You know, all, we all want to help. This is what we're doing, but we are, we're on our way. We're not there yet. No, I think really your work is, is is really not only enlightening, but but I think will will inspire other, uh, hopefully other you know doctors, researchers, and and pain patients to go more into depth. Uh, I'm hoping you know to come maybe one day to Israel. But if you ever should come to to Austria, please let me know. I would love to meet you in person, or maybe you know get together with uh, with Dr. Kurt Blas, who who you know who talked highly of you. So thank you so much again, and hope we can repeat this as a maybe as a panel discussion. <laughs> Uh, in the very near future. Thank you so much. Dr. Thank you Mike. very much. It was a pleasure. And thank you for everybody that listened to us. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank you. Yeah,